Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to an experiment. Now, these two bottles of whiskey right here from my collection are two bottles of whiskey from my collection that I'd rather weren't in my collection. Now, the uh, the Glenlivet, this is their Founders Reserve. It's not especially expensive and uh, to be honest, well, there's quite a lot gone out of it. You know, people have come around, had it in mixers and stuff and it's been okay. I've, I've come back to this probably every three to six months and never really got on with it. I keep trying, but it's just not getting anywhere. And then, the Penderin, as I'm told is pronounced, not Penderin, Penderin. Um, uh, Welsh whiskey, it's a Madeira cask finish, which normally is something I approve of. It's a stunning looking bottle, very fancy. Um, but again, if I'm honest, it's just not for me. I don't know, both of these, it's a difficult one. Neither of these are absolutely horrific, but neither of them I find myself enjoying on their own. So, another thing I've wanted to do for a while is start an infinity bottle. For those who are not familiar, an infinity bottle is basically a bottle of whiskey where you add small amounts of normally your favourite whiskies to it that you think will complement the blend. You're basically making your own blend, but it's ever-changing because every time you get to the bottom of a bottle, you put a bit in all that start or whatever. People do it in different ways, but typically it's their favourite whiskies. What I'm doing today is finding out, well, can I make use of these ones I don't think are very good in a bad infinity bottle to make something less bad? So what bottle will we be using? Well, as it looks just so happens, I finished a bottle of Bullet Bourbon over Christmas and this bottle has been knocking about ever since I've cleaned it, washed it and even tried to get the sticker off but as you can see didn't do a particularly good job but it's a nice looking bottle and that's all that really matters. So the first steps to this will simply be getting some of these two not so good whiskies into here, have a mix up and give it a try to see well, what we're starting with. I am going to try and at least be a little bit scientific about this and actually measure out the amounts going in each time. Now this is a uh, spirit measure and the whole thing, I think it's 50. I'm pretty sure the big end full to the top is 50. So we'll go with 50 mil increments to start with and then refine it a bit later. Get one of those little hip flask uh, fillers to try and help us out here. I'm not sure how effective it's going to be. This is probably going to result in a mess, but well, wish me luck. Okay, not too bad. And that's what 50 mil in the bottom of a bottle of whiskey looks like, so now we know. And then again with the pender in. So that is a 50-50 mix of, well, the two terrible whiskies. So first thing to do is give it a little mix around. Now, ideally, you'd leave this for a day, a week, or whatever, to really let those flavours infuse. But we need a, just a rough, raw and ready idea as to what to pair this with. Now, from memory, the um, the Glenlivet's a bit hot and not a lot else. The heat itself is not too much. There's just nothing to balance it, nothing to really kick it around. And maybe, well, the Penderin, just a bit lacklustre, really, on all fronts. But not offensive, just a bit uninteresting so I'm not sure how these are going to pair it's probably not going to be great but let's find out cheers I appear to have struck lucky that is better than either of them singularly and just for educational purposes tiny splash of the pender in yeah not as good for sure and tiny splash of the Glenlivet. I'm pouring the absolutely diddliest bits here because well, I need to, I want, I want to know what it tastes like. I'm not trying to just drink a load of whiskey. And the Penderin has a lot up front and not a lot at the back end. And the Glenlivet is kind of in reverse. So yeah, we're on to a good start. As a result, given that my intention with this really is to, well, have, make use of these bottles as much as possible. I think we're going to start by putting another two full measures of each in and then we're going to start adding some additions to make it a bit more interesting. Mm. 
Okay, so we're now at a third full, and we know what it tastes like. And to be honest, I'm, I am genuinely very happy with how this is going already. We're, we're not trying to make a coercive, you know, single malt blend or anything like that, although uh, these aren't. Oh, no, they are. They are both single malts. But we're not trying for that. We're going to add anything we like to this because this is basically a bottle making the most of a bad situation. Now, my rules on how to improve this, to be honest, are pretty simple. I'm now going to blind add a few things that I think will make it good. We'll test it, and if it works, then we might just repeat this process again to the top, and then as time goes on, we'll just keep adding bits to this bottle as it gets emptied. One of my rules for this, though, is that I'm definitely not opening anything that's at the moment unopened to help this along. So, what have we got? Well, opened as recently as yesterday, the uh, Tamna Vullin. Um, this one is their double cask, so it's American oak and sherry cask finish. Very nice, very nice. I don't know at this point how much that's going to help though, because whilst it's a significantly better dram than the two that are in there, I don't know that it's going to add any flavours in particular. One thing I do have is about half of this six centiliter sachet, so about three centiliters. Uh, this is um, uh, tomatin, tomatin, however you pronounce it, Cubocan signature. It's a little fiery, this one, but it's not super smoky. Now, you've got to be careful in an Infinity Dram because the smokiness can ruin it. But that said, while these aren't heavily peated, they do have a bit of a fire about them. And this is not a bad drama. It's a bit maybe much for me on its own. I don't think I'm going to drink this otherwise. So, you know what? We're making the most of a bad situation. Let's see what happens when we add... All of this in. I am going to measure it out actually so we know how much we're adding. And that is a little shy of the top. It's about 40 mil. So that's going to add some depth, some a bit of smokiness, a bit fire, but not too much. It's basically going to bring the taste of what the Glenlivet experience is, if that makes sense. The Glenlivet is hot, it's intent, it is warm, it's hot, it is very hot on the back end, but it doesn't necessarily deliver a lot in terms of that flavour. So, well, now I'm thinking we should probably sweeten it out a little bit. And for that, we are going to go across the pond. But which pond, I've not yet decided. I have a few choices. We have, I mean, it's it's just that. There's nothing, it's not, it's nothing special, it's just that. It's the fairly aggressive, fairly, well, it's great as a mixer, let's be honest. I don't, don't it might have a bit too much heat itself to start balancing that Glenlivet. Um, Another option we have, from the same side of the pond, is this, the Slipknot Bands whiskey. Now, this is very, it's a very good all runner, and I think there's some rye in it as well. Yeah, there is, there's rye content in this. Now, I know a lot of people won't put peated or rye content whiskeys in, but there's only a little bit, and I think, I do think this might help, so go for a full measure of the uh, number nine Iowa whiskey, the actual distiller on this is uh, Cedar Ridge Distillery for those who want to know. Now then, what else? Well, I do have this. Now, technically, not whiskey, but it is by any other name. It's not whiskey because it was, um, well, it's distilled beer, really. Uh, it's still matured in oak cast and everything else. It's just quite young and I guess not exactly as per the, um, the descriptor of whiskey, but that said, it has a whiskey vibe, but actually, now I re-familiar myself with it, I don't think it's the one. We do have this, the Benry, the original 10, three cast matured, I do like this one, bought this a few months ago, it's nearly gone already, it's a very well balanced drop, and yeah, I think this will do no harm whatsoever. Right then, the only other thing I have really that I considered adding is Red Breast 12, but I'm not sure that it's going to, it's not going to make it any worse, but it does have a sweetness to it. Ah, you know what, Let's. this is an experiment and I've got a lot of whiskey, this has got quite a lot left in it, so I'm not going to feel too bad. Let's go for the full 50. And the red breast 12. So let's get this shaken up and give it a test.
Well, nice well, golden colour to it, as you would probably expect. Doesn't smell, but it smells very enjoyable, actually. Getting heat, floral, sweetness, scent. The heat from the Glenlivet and that rye spice. It does make for a pretty mean back end, but it's good. It's actually, it's not the best, it's not incredible. I'm not going to proclaim to, you know, made something unbelievable, but it certainly could be worse. What this is, though, is maybe just a little bit too intense on the back end now compared to what it was when it was just the Glenlivet and the Penderin. But we can fix that easily because the Penderin has no back end whatsoever. So put a bit more of that in. Balance out the front a bit. Let's bring it up to, I don't know, three quarters full. Gives us some room to play and then I'm going to leave it for a week and we'll see what happens. I'll be honest, I'm thinking another two measures of this. Time for another shake. And another taste. It's warm, it's sweet, it's spicy. I wouldn't say it was an easy drink, but it's not especially harsh either. And I'll be very interested to see what happens with this after we leave it alone for a bit. So for this one, I think we're gonna leave it there. What is gonna be interesting though, is that I've got another bottle with a little bit left in it, but something a bit special, at least to me. And I think I'm gonna use that one to make my own, well, I guess favorites, Infinity Dram. So if you want to see how that one goes, be sure to subscribe and tune into that. But otherwise, for now, that is all. I will do an update on this in some time to come. I will give you a one day, one week, one month update potentially. If you want to know everything that went into this bottle today, then I'm going to put it up on screen now. I can't remember all of it and all the measurements, but well, I'm going to trace it as I watch the video back and yeah, on screen now, I guess. So grab a screenshot of that if you want. But yeah, that's everything that's gone into it. It will be very, very interesting to see how this develops. And that is all I've got to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you will be so kind, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.